Okay, so it's Thursday night, 8 o'clock, and we are live once again. That's well, good to see some people already in the chat. So yeah, I took um, um, advice on board last week, and then I set up a scheduled show this week, so get gave people a chance to jump in before the show starts. Very cool. So Mad Code says, do I count as fir being first because the show hasn't started yet? And no one else of the waiting people have said anything. Yeah, that, I, I would say that counts. I'm um, seeing the rumoured codex release release list for this year. Only non-power armor is Imperial Guard and Admech. Wow. Yeah, um, I mean, that was rumoured a while back that they would be the only non-power armored ones. Bismol of true, but wouldn't surprise me at all. In a way, I suppose, um, if they get a lot of the power armor stuff out of the way now, then hopefully it'll be a good sort of two or three years that we'll just have sort of non-power armor releases. That would be quite nice. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. No one's saying otherwise, so that's always a good start. Um, I just need to close a couple of windows down. I don't know why everything's open on here. So I'll get rid of that. Okay, so yeah, um, this week I'm going to be painting this fella. I have the um, Forge Wild Custodes Dreadnoughts. It's already undercoated in grey, so we can just go straight into painting him. So yeah, if you're about, um, just jump on the chat, say hello. Let me know what, what you're working on this week, and of course you can send me an email if you've got anything you want to show off on the show. Okay. And I'll also be showing off the Stonehorn, who is now complete. Some of you may already have seen him on the um, social media pages. We we have, oh, excuse me. I've literally just had a nice, nice big McDonald's meal, so if I start burping or whatnot, I apologise. So yeah, the Stonehorn. I'm really happy with how this guy's um, turned out. Sort of went for like this sort of crystal, crystalish look on the horns. But yeah, I'm um, not bad actually. Um, I think we we're building them on last week's show, so to get them done in less than a week, I'm really happy with it. But yeah, I'm um, we'll show them off a bit more later as well. So. I already have my paint colour here ready for the custodies. So I'm using the Viking Gold, um, same, same colour that I use for all my custodies. Get some of that on the pan up. And just find a good brush. Get one of these. So I hope everyone is well. Uh, week's gone really quick. Um, I'm really surprised. I'm actually going away. I think I mentioned it last week. We're going away for the weekend. So I've got that to look forward to. Uh, I'm literally just going to be going over most of this with the gold. Um, that's separating a bit on the top for some reason. Maybe I've thinned it down a bit too much. Certainly wouldn't be. I mean, the primer's stuck nicely, so it wouldn't be a problem with a release agent on it, I thought. But, ah, uh, what a good start. Um, I also need a reference. So, see what's what. So the majority of this miniature will be gold. Um, I'm actually sort of hopeful that I can actually paint paint the whole miniature tonight because there's not really much to it. Might need a couple of coats of this first, but 
We shall see how we go. Um, I wish it would cover a bit better. Seems Chaos won the first battle in the Fate of Fate of Colonel campaign. Yeah, I saw that. I was actually really surprised. And um, will we be getting a new Noble Snail? Um, probably eventually. I'm sort of at a stage now where I've got so much stuff what needs to be built and painted. Um, getting a lot of stuff commission painted lately. So I'm sort of trying to hold off trying to buy everything that's new and shiny, but I do want to get it eventually. But yeah, I actually quite like it. I know a lot of people are moaning it's a bit sort of cartoonish maybe. But I think you can get away with that with Nurgle. I sort of miss that sort of element to some of the GW stuff. Yeah, I really like to pick up the Stormcast female character as well. <laughs> yeah. That is it. 50,000 points of partly built or fine stuff, yeah. I can't be far off. I've got loads of Forge Wild stuff. I mean, this guy's one of them, so... I got him built up over the last couple of days. Seems to be paint seems to be going on a bit better now. I don't know what that's all about. I must have just thinned it out too much. Evening squeak. Thanks for joining us. So I got the old stone horn on the table. Show off people. Oh, I'm painting this dreadnought. We're getting there. There's the one downside of drop of bottles is you have to keep and put stuff on there. I find it hilarious that most Skaven characters have really cute names. Yeah. So I think I'll leave the gold on the shoulder pads. From there, apart from the trim. Um, you can see on the trim where it sort of broke off in the middle on both sides. Which I suppose for symmetry is okay. But it's just sort of where it was joined onto a little bit of sprue and that. Just so brittle. Um, most of this miniature is actually really well made, but the shoulder pads seem really flimsy. Which is a shame. But never mind. Brothers of Warriors. I do like the Skaven. I wouldn't mind having a Skaven army at some point, or just having some with my Chaos. I've got one of the Spire of Dawn sets that I really want to build and paint at some point. Or get that commissioned. So yeah, I apologise that I've been painting a lot of gold at this early stage of the video. But it's going to look really nice once it's done. I'm going to give it a nice droochy violet wash. And then we can dry brush on some highlights. I've finished a 4000 point scaven list now with Fankwall and Bone Ripper. Oh, I love that model. Really cool. I love the Vermin Lord as well. 
and the Storm Fiends. Oh, excuse me. Storm Fiends are some of my favourite miniatures in that range as well. I'm going to convert some up to make some grotesques at some point. Use all three of the Venom Lords. Nice. I really like the Forge World one as well. It's nice to see Forge World bringing back some of that older stuff for for um, Age of Sigma. Hopefully that will that trend will continue. Told the fluff of a white skaven was that the reason that the reason they are 100% loyal is because they get sh shown stuff that's so scary their fur turns white, so they fear nothing but what betrayal would do to them. <laughs> that's quite cool. I was thinking about the Forge World grid. Horror model, but it's quite expensive. Yeah, I mean, most of the Forge World stuff is, isn't it? But you get what you pay for, they're really nice. Yeah, that that is very true. I paid thirty quid for free warp block Josales. I'm trying to think off the top of my head what they are. Are they like the um they are the ones that have like they're holding like the orbs or something? I can't remember. I'm not too familiar with some of the Skaven stuff. So, there is a lot of gold on this miniature. They have equivalent of long strike, long strike crossbows for stormcast, but with skaven and guns. Ah, right, okay. Well, I know how good the long strike crossbows are, so they're probably worth it. <laughs> the brute horror is twenty dollars from China, but then again, that resin is made from grinding down tumors and mixing it with toxic binders. Yeah, I've had some of the China cast stuff and. Oh, quality's not bad. And um, them sites tend to disappear and reappear. But obviously they're really immoral. Going to get Total War Warhammer 2. Um, well, I'm not because my computer is just crap. It would never run it. I'm tempted to pick up the first one just to see how bad my computer will play it. But I don't think there'll be much hope of this one really running it very well. But who knows? I can but try.
I was going to try not for it to be you'd be all over the scale in one squeak. But yeah, Dark Elf campaign would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly agree with that. Yeah, I mean, the four drop voices are quite crazy. And, they qu yeah, their quality control isn't always the best. Um, there's a... Like, the back piece on this one doesn't actually... Um, you can see, like, there's a big gap there. Um, that's nothing to do with how I put it together. There's pieces what fit together and they go together, but it's just left me with this... Um, gap at the back. I'm not going to worry too much. If it was at the front, I'd probably have green stuffed it in that, but... Yeah, trying to cast models 50 to 90% cheaper than Forge World have better casts and free parts replacement. They have awesome models because they don't want to have to send replacement parts. Yeah, that's true. And what what Forge World quality control seems to be meh, we can send replacements. Yeah, that's true. They probably just have such a large volume that it's probably easier for them to send replacements than it is to just double check everything. Internet just had a seizure for a second. So I'm going to paint the inside of the leg bits gold as well. So these main legs on the shins are actually going to be black. We are getting there. We are getting there. So I've armed them with the storm bowlers. I faint hope that they'll release some 40k rules one day. Well, if when they update the Horus Heresy rules to be more like 8th, then Storm Bottles will be pretty decent. There's a couple of, couple of pairs of twin meat ones. I can't believe how full I feel after that McDonald's. Oh, struggling to lean forward. <laughs> One sh shop in China had to tell people to stop telling others about your store because he was getting too many orders. I find that hilarious. <laughs> oh, pardon me. That's quite good. That's when you know you're doing well. Feel free to tell your friends about Bitsbox. We still get a large volume of orders, which is a bit of a pain to keep up with, but that's all welcome more. So I do have gold on his spear as well.
I like Dark Elves because it's a change from Skaven in the fact that I can actually have decent melee. <laughs> I bought for about five hundred pounds from Ford. It feels like complete waste now since due to the China cast models uh, are worthless on the aftermarket, and I could have gotten three times much stuff from China. Yeah, I don't know. I spent a lot on Ford, but yeah, I'm just gonna open a window. I don't normally open a window when I do these, but it is so hot. Um, There we go. Hopefully there's not too much sound from outside. It's quite quiet tonight. It just gets really hot under these lights. Oh, something I can show you guys just while I let some of this dry. I'm working on this for a video. This is like some dragon flames. So I'm going to have the dragon breathing these flames down. And this is early stage of the painting, so there's a lot more to it yet. But yeah, look out for that in the video in a week or two's time. So a little, little peek there. I mean, hits on five, wound on four. God damn it, clan rats. Yeah, but they're they're quite cheap in points, aren't they? Um. Spit. Um. Oh, you got a similar like, instruction booklet for this. It's actually quite cool. Like full coloured. And yes, it is a Forge World miniature with instructions. They do exist. Quite rare, but they do exist. People say you should support Forge World and the creators, but GW seem to have no problem letting their own stores ban for use of Forge World in their stores. So support a product not even recognised by GW. Yeah, that's true, isn't it? They're very iffy when it comes to like, Forge World stuff. And of course, even if they didn't, then, once they're painted, who's going to know? And not to mention the indexes were completely out of garbage. Ugh. I think mean, there's more rattle than there is pages for them and things. Yeah, they, they rushed them out. Which was a great shame. Real great shame. So many mistakes. You can sort of tell a lot of a lot of it was copy and paste jobs, and then they sort of missed little bits they meant to add. Uh, it was a great it was a great shame. Uh, Sixty points for ten clan rats can't really complain, I guess. Yeah, that's cheap, isn't it? If you look at something like carrot acolytes, who are like 120, 140, they're not great in combat either. What is this mystical thing called socialising? I did none of that today. Well, that's why we're here, isn't it? Socialise over the internet. That's a thing, right? It's overrated. People are overrated, right? <laughs> do that by typing and not talking. Yeah, exactly. I think most people probably do these days. So, I'm guessing even this thing's gold. So much gold. Yeah, my weekly dose of, it, dose of interaction. <laughs> Well, half my time running Bitsbox is spent on my own. Well, it has been lately anyway. But that's fine. But then otherwise find it find it easier to work 
on my own a lot of the time because I need to sort of concentrate a bit more. Get loads of interaction with people playing Call of Duty or some other first person shooter played by 12 year olds. Can't remember the last time I played a game online. It's been a while. I've been playing through, I finished playing through Bioshock and now I'm playing through Bioshock 2. I love them games, I've played for them a few times but I want to play for them again. And um, played a little bit more of um, Resident Evil Biohazard as well. Just alright, getting through it slowly. But. I don't play video games that much. Um, a lot of my free time lately has just been going on painting, trying to get these miniatures done as quick as I can. And um, I think we're going to start the Path to Glory probably not this weekend, but next weekend. It's when we sort of penciled it in, whether we can or not. We sort of pencil them in, and then if we if we're free, we'll we'll do it. But I'm looking forward to starting that. But you might see a lot more Beast Claw Raiders on the on these live shows. So that's cool. I think that is all the gold. Just a little bit of the inside of the trim there. Yeah, they are really good. I, I really like them. I know not everyone likes Infinite. But I quite like that. It's really easy, but... I like it. The first one actually, sort of after, after my playing the second one, I didn't realize sort of how much easier Bioshock 2 is over the first one. The first one's actually quite difficult in places. I just don't think you get enough sort of money or ammo to make it a bit tricky. Towards the end, at least. But I got through it. The final boss is actually really easy. You get all these weapon pickups and health pickups before you face him and face a piece of piss then. I'm currently playing Crossout, a game with a game about building cars with guns. It's a horrible pay to win game but it's fun as long as you don't have to play against the coiners. <laughs> I've got that on my Xbox One, that's pretty good, but I'm addicted to Neverwinter right now. Cool. I remember a really old game um, about cars with guns called like Vigilante 8. I don't know if anyone played that. That was really good. I used to love that. Basically just going around, driving around, shooting people um, who are also in cars, driving around, shooting them. That was quite fun. That was on the PlayStation 1, I think. So going, going back a little bit. Uh, check this message. Bear with. I'm not being any social. I promise. So, never heard of it. I'm going to do research after this. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I think I'm, I'm going to paint these black areas before I wash, just so make sure that gold definitely dries before I put the wash on. So let's get these um, these sort of shin shin guards, I suppose. I remember when I played through Final Fantasy X on my second playthrough, I maxed everything and the last boss was a joke. I did 1.2 million damage. One attack where 100k would have killed it. Nice. I remember sort of maxing out Final Fantasy VII once. I used to really grind on that. I only remember getting to like level 60 or something before the end of disc 1. Whereas I've, I've completed it on like level 50. Hmm. 
Mm, what should I get? Food that isn't microwave ramen or Malekith. <laughs> I'm gonna do Malekith. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with noodles. Last thing I'm thinking about right now is food. Ugh. <laughs> Some kind of drug. <laughs> To be fair, you know, this stuff should be classed as drugs. It's expensive and addictive. <laughs> Google it and just got some ugly ass <laughs> health vampire dude. <laughs> Okay, he's getting there. It's always nice to get the base colours blocked in. Start to get a sense of achievement. Probably have to go back over some of this black after my dry brushing stage, mind you. Ah, don't know if you guys can hear that, but. Sirens in the background, that sums it all up around here. But then that is partly because we're not, I'm not that far away from the hospital. <laughs> so. Or, and the police station actually. The police station's not far away either. Literally just sort of around the corner. So I suppose there's that. He has a name. Does your war warlord free fun the destroyer? <laughs> I live about 300 meters from a fire station, so I hear them a few times a week. Yeah, our fire station's luckily a bit further away from me, but he used to actually live opposite opposite the hospital, so sirens all the time. And then then we moved to a house which was um. Oh, on one of the on one of the sort of um main roads which is the only route into like one of the nearby villages. So you used to get hot, um ambulances going down that road quite a lot if they ever want to go into um one of the nearby villages, they'd always have to take that road, so it's actually worse in them places than it is here. Okay, I'm gonna leave the black at that. Um take my glasses off. Normally I take my glasses off and it does help. So they're coming off. I mean business. I just can't get these bits here. Floof is the destroyer of worlds. I don't, th I don't think in fantasy you'd have destroyers of worlds because there was only one world, and it got destroyed. Or be destroyer of realms, but even then, I'm gonna change my Wallace name from Rockfang to Floof. <laughs> it's not Floofy.
even as water's not that cold. Oh, so hot. Um, Drucci Violet. I love Drucci Violet on gold. Looks really nice. I've been on 4 channel enough to know what Rock Fang looks like, and it's not pretty. Ah, <laughs> uh, 4chan. Alright, let's see. Uh, something bigger. You'll do. Not the 4chan taste, just no. Now it seems the rumoured release list might be inaccurate, so there's still hope. So what exactly was on the rumoured release list? Um, obviously, Admech, Death Guard. Oh, excuse me. Um, Imperial Guard. Was there anything else? Slash D and slash B of him plays local home. Um, I really lack the big brushes. I seem to ruin them. They're all just solid. I don't know why I keep them. Ah, Fires and Sons. Wow, Blood Angels, Dark Angels, and Space Wolves. Last three will be released on the same day, so nothing new for them guys then. Probably just a clan pack cipher. Uh, this brush ruined. I'm just gonna have to use this number two. Yeah, see when you look at that, apart from the Astra Militarum, just can't really see many new releases coming alongside them. Um, not saying like they all desperately need it, but I mean, you can hope that um, the stuff that they don't plan on updating anytime soon will be the stuff that gets codexes really quickly, just to have them. Then they can just work on armies that desperately need extra stuff. So I mean, that could be hopeful. I mean. Yeah, this year would kind of suck, but then you have like two or three years where it's going to be Xenos races, then that would be pretty sweet. And maybe Sisters of Battle, <gasps> who knows? I think we all know, the answer will be no. That's the only sort of good thing you can sort of take from it. You can just see that they'll just add, they'll add Primaris to these, um, Codexes. Yeah, no new kits because GW wants them to buy from Maris kits. So perhaps an overpriced upgrade kit like the Ultramarine's got. Yeah, true. Um, I've actually got some of them to sell the bits for, but I haven't took the pictures yet. I'll do it next week when I'm back. Interestingly, um, the Intercessor squad didn't come with a power sword. You've got every single option that squad can take, minus a power sword and chain sword for certain factions. Yeah, it's in the upgrade sprue. Just seems a bit odd though that I didn't put one in. So my friend called for Skaven mice once, I killed all of his iron jaws. The Skaven are not mice. No, they're, they're rats. And as I got my Rick and Morty t-shirt on, someone needs to make a pickle Rick to fight him. <laughs> pickle Rick. <laughs> I'm not the only one who watches it, clearly. <laughs> I really hate GW even splitting up codexes. There's a horrible way to do it since GW can't keep up with releases as it is. All Space Marines should be a single codex. All 
Chaos Vision and Single Codex, not 8 to 10. It's funny because for years people were saying that the different Chaos Legions needed their own codexes, but yeah, just a big bumper one. I like what they did with the Traitor Legion. Um, yeah, I mean, it's harder with some of the Space Marine stuff. Cause like, I mean, it's like Space Walls are so so different. Yeah, um, the thing about the index is it literally just rules. Now, what would be nice if they just had, if the codexes were just rules, then you could do it easy enough. But I like to just stick in loads of fluff, loads of artwork and stuff. I mean, that would be nice to just have sort of books where I just all the rules. With all the lead and traits, warlord traits and stuff. And then those who want all the fluff and stuff can just buy the bigger versions. That would have been cool. Hate how GW split the Skaven clans up for battle times. I'm assuming they did a Pestilence one. Why not make it like the Blades of Corn one? Yeah, I think in the future you might get that. Something similar. Yeah, I'm kind of don't like how some of the factions have all got split up in Age of Sigma. I think that's even worse than having separate Space Marine chapters and stuff. Pete and Nicholas is here. Um, sorry I'm late, I got lost. Okay. <laughs> Not good. No one should get lost in this day and age. We all have maps on our phones. <laughs> Although I know it, it still happens. Looking forward to tomorrow when we go away and no doubt get lost on, along the way. Yeah, Squeak says new people. Yeah, it's literally just been Squeak and Mad Cow in the chat. Well, that's a bad thing. Keep the conversation going well, and that is the most important thing about the chat. Yeah, that's true, and the Space Marines do have a similar number to all the factions. I mean, if you added Chaos as well, then you probably have got there. before wash. Um, it's obviously not going to focus brilliantly, but that's how he's looking now. The purple really dulls him the gold down, which is what I want, because my custodians are quite a dull looking gold. Um, I think that hand needs some wash. And then after that, let that dry. I can just dry brush it. So that's going to be cool. Put him to one side. I'm talking about scaven to my pet rats. What am I doing? <laughs> if GW did one coat a month with new kits every other month, um, every other month would have to be space Marine or power armor in general to keep up with the two year update schedule. Wow. Once your non Spaceman Codex gets an update or new models, you have to wait three to ten years for the next update while Spaceman gets new kits every year at the minimum. Yeah, and you know part of that's just money, isn't it? 
if they could make the same income from um, like orcs as they could from space marines, then obviously you'd see more orcs, tyranids, etc. You know, um, when it comes to selling bits online, I would probably make more money if I just had a website that sold space marine bits or space marine and chaos bits. Because a lot of the stuff, like, if I got rid of Necrons, Tau, and Tyranids tomorrow, I probably wouldn't notice much difference in my sales. Like, if that money was spent into, like, power arm stuff, I'd probably make even more. But, that, obviously that would still peel off, people off, so I wouldn't do that. So... Okay, I got an email from someone who's watching the live stream. Um, I'll reply. I will reply to you um, after the show. <laughs> um, we've had a bit of we've had some issues with emails. Um, had a couple of people saying that they haven't got replies from emails, and I look in the inbox and I can't find the email. So something's messed up there. But I'll have a look. Technology's great. Oh, is that voice is a revolution. <laughs> um, I was going to say something. Oh yeah, I was just going to moan about Royal Mail then, because cool stuff going wrong. Had a few things go missing from them lately as well. It's a problem with the rich getting richer. Oh, you, you don't even have to mention that to someone in the UK. <laughs> Boys spend money on an army that won't get updated for years when you can get one that gets updated all the time. Yeah. Yeah, we have a government who's all about the rich getting richer. Um, probably people at G probably the people at the head of GW probably vote for him. <laughs> but yeah, that's I mean capitalism has its downsides, doesn't it? But at the same time if people want Space Marines then Yeah, that's part of the issue as well. But as you say it's sort of like a vicious cycle, isn't it, really? Like People want space marines because they have the most stuff, or, and they get updated a lot, and they get updated a lot because people want them. <laughs> just goes round and round. Squeak still version says, "Wow, more, more new people, high voices." And Pian says, is that the Forge World model that costs £50? Um, it's the Forge World one, yeah. I don't know how much it costs. If it's £50, it's £50, yeah. I really can't remember. It's been so long ago since I bought it. But yeah, it's quite nice, isn't it? I can't believe this is the darkest red that GW does. Look how bright it looks. That's corn red. It's way too bright. They need to do a really nice dark red. <laughs> I need to ask who's still here. Say hi if you're still here. Um, I'm still here. All the China cars one cost cost fifteen dollars. Yeah. And um, Benny Boy, Boy Sutton is here. Hello. Peter it says hi. Although I I could get lost any time. <laughs> but yeah, here now that's important. Um, Finn L Fall Y H says hi. Hello. Um, ha I don't believe I've seen you on the chat in the past, so really cool to see a new face. I know some people will just um watch or listen to the show without being on the chat, and that's that's cool too. 
But I quite enjoy the interaction between people. That's partly why I do it. I'm new to the channel. Well, I hope you like the channel. I hope you're enjoying it. It's always nice to get new people on the channel. And, um, yeah, if, if there's any content that you particularly enjoy, then please let us know. If there's anything you'd like to see, then definitely um, let us know as well. Please feed that red that I used on my blood angels. Yeah, that was scab red. That was really nice. I mean, that was darker than this. Yeah, I miss the old scab red. I remember my my cousin when we were younger. He had like the old third edition dark elder, painted in like the scab red and metallic scheme. They looked lovely. He is a really talented painter, actually. He was better than me when we first started. But he hasn't been in the hobby for years. He, he was really good. He's only like 11 or 12 at the time, and he was a really good painter. For his age. Which Primark is most likely to return to the 40k tabletop game? Being a Salamander player, I hope it's Vulcan. Yeah, I've still got I've still got Vulcan over there to finish off. If you remember, if some people remember, I started painting them weeks ago. Um, obviously more Terrans next. I don't know the Chaos ones are always more likely, aren't they? Like Fulgrim will probably return. I think Perturabo is a Demon Prince as well, isn't he? Um, Lehman Russ, maybe. Maybe. I don't, obviously, I don't know the status of Vulcan. I think he's meant to still be alive, isn't he? It'd be cool, though. I think eventually, maybe, all the ones who are alive will come back. Eventually. Has anyone here ever tried to make Dark Souls characters with GW bits? Well, I haven't. Um, I think there's Dark Souls miniatures, isn't there? I tried to make a Skyrim Yarl of White Run, but it kind of looked weird. That's cool. I've seen some people use um, Marauder bits to make... Um, Skyrim miniatures and that. Now I just use my fist and reds, but but it's not as good. Yeah, it's brighter than um than corn red. I think corn red is the darkest. Had a look at the GW color chart. Mix corn red with Mornfang it might give you a darker red, or corn red with black. Yeah, that's a point actually. Um, I did. I wonder what's one of these. Absolutely. I did use the tints to mix um, a pot up, so maybe I'll try using that. Um, I forgot about that. Making red darker can be very tricky. It's always it's always tricky with black because you put a bit too much black in and then it's just black. Perhaps um, some kind of interpretations. Oh. You're talking about the um, Dark Souls stuff. Oh, Skyrim stuff. I think I still have some Terminators in Mechroite Red. Um, that rings a bell, I can't really remember. There's still a lot of the old colours now. <laughs> and the human rust needs to return as a giant furry. <laughs> I mean, it would be interesting if, like, the wolf and curse took over him and he was like, yeah, that would be weird though. I think a lot of people would be annoyed about that. It won't be Sanguinius. No, but I, I can't wait for his um, 30k model because it would just be epic. It would be so nice. So, yeah, I'm applying this dark, darker, deeper red. Um, It's not dry yet, but. That's, that still looks really bright on the camera. It doesn't look that doesn't look as bright in person. I'll admit. We'll see how that looks when it's when it's dry. I'll probably put a null oil wash over it. 
I use like a so I've been using like a sort of dark turquoise green colour with my custodies as well it would be nice if I could get that in here somewhere I could have done it on the shoulder pads I suppose but I don't know I quite like the red I quite like the red That's nice. Yeah, I'm quite liking that. Yeah, um, oh. Where are we? I used the human head from the Exalted Deathbringer and then used a Slave to Darkness Warrior. Oh, it's like regular Chaos Warriors. Scabred is supposed to be the same as corn red. Did you mess with your corn red anyway? No, I've always found it just to be a bit too light. I mean, scabred was darker. It wasn't much darker. Um, this is the difference between the two pots that I've got. I can't look to the camera. So you see that I've added the tint to one. It actually looks the same on the bottom where the paint cell, but you can sort of see where it's like darker. GW needs a pink. Yeah, they do, don't they? They're just not. They've got pink, are they? The GW pinks. I mean, you've got the edge colour. Um, Fulgrim pink. That's. I know it's not bright pink, it's more of a pale pink, but. pinkish. But yeah, I know what you mean, though. Like the Vallejo ones got some really good pinks. Yeah, it does seem weird. There's sort of gaps in their colours. There's so many colours, but there's still sort of gaps. And you think something just as common as that. Um, that's sort of like a standard orange. I think even the blues could done with a bit more brighter shades. Yeah, these have tentacle pink, yeah. Hawk turquoise was a really nice colour as well, I used to love that. Has anyone seen any of the first edition 40k models? They're so tiny, one of my clan mats is bigger, if not bigger than that space machine. I saw someone compare um, the first edition Dreadnought to a Redemptor, which was hilarious. Um, literally the first the first edition Dreadnought was probably not much taller than this um, librarian. Maybe a little bit, but not much. But so little. Yeah, pink is easy to make from red and white. That is true. Um, Finn just says, I, I just have the 40k Ultramarines. They're a basic colour, but decent size. Yeah, but I mean, the Marines weren't too bad. Like, really old Rogue Trader ones were a bit, a bit tiny, though, but... The plastics have been quite consistent with the um, Mark 7s. Um, so the gold looks almost dry, and um, the wash on that's almost dry. I might as well just add some other colours while I'm waiting for it though. So, I don't really want to use Lead Belcher. So I'm gonna use fresh now. Yeah, that is a problem when you're mixing paints, just trying to get that exact same shade. Wet palettes are very useful for that, but if you're using a lot of it, it is a bit of a bugger. Peter says, "Hey Squeak, I have some of those old minis and rhinos and predators. I got them from a mate that played, but lost interest." Yeah, I, I quite like the old rhinos. They're so tiny now, but... I have one of the old... Um, you might have seen it in Bat Reps, my old Predator that I used for my Nurgle army. Um, you might not remember it because it gets blown up on the first turn. I think I've used it twice in Bat Reps, and it hasn't got past turn one. Yeah, did I use nine or ten drops in my in my pink mix? One drop too much or too little makes the shade different. Yeah, and obviously sometimes it's, if you're not using dropper bottles, it's hard to measure out exact ratios as well. Okay, so Squeak is now off as he's going to eat his, his noodles. <laughs> 
Um, thanks for joining us. Um, thanks for keeping the chat um, going well at the start of the show. That was really cool. So enjoy your noodles. And um, remember, the sacrifice is worth it. It's worth it. Um, use that, that silver on the palette already. No, it's over there. I was going nuts then. I couldn't see where my silver was on the palette. I'm going to use pipe silver. Why not? It's quite a bright silver, this fresh metal, but I'll darken it down with a null oil. I've got all these bits as well. Yeah, it never mixes the same twice. That is true. It's even worse when g really decides to update their paint range again. During my years in the hobby, it's changed at least three times. But I've been in the hobby slightly longer than me. I think I've only been through a couple of the changes. I have some of the old, old pots. Actually, I'm going to... I am going to jump into the desk behind me and grab out a couple because... I'm feeling a little bit nostalgic. I'm surprised I don't use them as much actually. What have we got? Uh, that's where you can't find them. Yeah, I mean, remember these pots? They are crap, aren't they? Old Mithril Silver. I thought I had like chestnut ink. I used to love the chestnut ink. I've got, I've got a few pots of Necron Abyss. Um, obviously, these are slightly newer than the previous pots, but. Now, this is a colour I wish. This is a colour I do wish they, they did. They don't do one like this. Um, Candle Blue is a bit lighter. But I'm sure on any colour chart they'll probably say they're the same, but uh, if I can find it. Well you can see the difference there. Cantle blue is definitely lighter. But I use I use this colour for my crimson fists. So once this runs out, I certainly won't paint any more for the army. Um Mad Mad Kay says, I'll oh, get the fifth pot style now. I'm trying to think, they had, I believe the Mithril one was the second pot style. Yeah, because didn't they have like these plastic, um, basically, I thought, didn't they have one sort of similar to, similar to this to begin with? These little sort of flip lids. This is the Forge World Reverend powder, but I'm sure like the original pots were like that, weren't they? And um, when I first started, when I first started in the hobby, they were, they were these, they were these ones. Burnished gold. They're quite. I mean, they're twelve mil. Um, I, I think these are twelve mil as well. It's just. It's weird to think there's the same amount in them. Yeah. So then they went to these, and then. Necron Abyss, that was a that was a change after that, wasn't it? I'm trying to think if there was any other pots. There's no one there. Yeah, so after after them, they they did go to these, didn't they? Which are vi virtually what we got now. Um, I don't think there was a there was a series in between. Obviously, they came up with a foundation paint, which are what we now know as base paints. Necron Abyss was a fourth pot style. Uh, I bet you can't get rid of that pot. What, this one? Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, the paint's completely dried up inside. Maybe these screw ones, like the burnished gold. Yeah, the burnished gold one. Probably can't. Oh, no, I've done it. I have done it. 
Look at that. That's dead. I actually use these. They got blue tag on top, so I just attach my headphones to the top. Wow. That is solid as a rock. And that was a problem with these pots. They dry up really easy. The rim's just full of dried up paint. And that wargamer's here. Hello. I used to be nostalgic, but it's not the same now. <laughs> so what was the pot style after these? Um, and why haven't I got any? I should have some if, I, if there was a different type. Ah! Aha! Uh -huh. It was these. Because these have a flip lid. Yeah, you are right, Madco. So these these are the next ones. This is completely dried up. Um, it's all like on one side. I don't know why I've still got some of these. I know, like I say, I use some of them for putting miniatures on, but I don't really need this many. Yeah, the flip lid. So they same pot design, but with a flip lid. So that's the third. Ah, little trip down memory lane, there, or a little history lesson for those. So fourth pot style was these. And of course, um, we're now on these, which are essentially the same, but the lids obviously slightly different. They they went transparent, but then for some of them, they're not transparent. They've still got like, like my retrofit arm is in. It's weird, but yeah, um, I'm kind of glad I wasn't. Well, I wasn't old enough, but <laughs> to, to use the original ones would have been quite cool. And I was talking about my cousin earlier. Yeah, she. Excuse me, he actually did have some of them because he bought a job lot of someone and he had some of the old paints in there. Oh dear. I have a bag full of old paints, probably a hundred different old paints, selling them for like a euro each. That's cool. I'm just about to get back into painting after a lot of years, but I'm reluctant to go through my paints because they'll they all all be dry. Yeah. I mean so many of mine are. But all these old ones. And uh, I'll be able to find one what isn't out of the old ones. I didn't actually check this foundation one. But I think that. Let's have a look. No, there's still paint on that. That's not bad. Um, it's a bit it's a bit gloopy, but you can thin that out. Yeah, you can see on the power look. That's cool. And that is um Calvin Brown. Um whatever that's meant to be these days. Yeah, I don't know why I haven't my old paints. I ended up buying a mega paint set off one of my mates for, for about a couple of hundred quid, which is quite a good saving over retail. And then um, one of our local stores years ago had a big clear out of stuff. I think it was them. I'm sure it was, and I am um, bought a load of paints there, so I got loads of spare paints. Where well, you did it, but the paint is fucked, yeah. Apologies as if this has already been asked, but how many of those dreads do you have? Because the sword and board dread looks ace. Yeah, I have him as well. Um, I built this one up first. I actually think that one does look better than this one. I agree. But yeah, I've got one of each. The other one's just not built. I only built this guy up. I only finished him last night. And I primed him this morning. He's getting there. He's almost... I would say he's actually now... Just a tiny little bit at the back there where... We'll go back to painting the metallics later. Um, the silver later, but... It's a bit there where the... Where the purple's still just a little bit wet, but... Because it's on a bit thick. But we should be ready for a dry brush. So dry brushing. Um, Sigma right now with the dry paints. I I have some when they first came out, and then I have some more recent ones, and they have changed. They have changed. Um, they have they've changed the consistency of these because when they first came out, they were really thick. And they weren't that great for dry brushing. So some of my older ones are a bit crap to use, but the newer ones, they've got more medium in them, and they seem to be a lot better for dry brushing. Which is weird, because you think like the dry paint are better for dry brushing, but 
like I've got the golden griffin here. I'm trying to I wonder if I could sort of show you. I mean, you sort of, if you sort of look in them, you can sort of see the difference. Like, the golden griffin's really sort of clumpy, where it's like really dry, and then this one's sort of a bit there. And it's just, I just find them so much easier to use. Anxious to get killing a dread. Huh. To be fair to Forge World, I think they've done a great job on the Custodius range. I can't really think of anything I particularly dislike. No, I agree, I quite like them. Um, expensive, but that big flying chip they got coming out looks quite cool as well. But yeah, really nice. I've got um, that Ixion Hail guy as well up in the box up there, which I'd, I'd like to do at some point. Um, I've got a decent dry brush somewhere and I don't know where I put it. I thought I'd put it in here. Yeah, that one will, that one will do. I want myself some more of a brush brush cleaner soap as well. Really handy to use if you're dry brushing because these brushes can just get destroyed so quickly. I also, um, and I might do a review on them, I bought this. This is a massive big block of soap, um, which is actually half the price of this. And I've used it a little bit for brush cleaning, and it does really soften the bristles, which is really nice. Um, I haven't had much success trying to get a lot of the paint out like I do with this. This gets the paint out quicker, but this seems to really soften the bristles nicely. Um, so yeah, I'll be using this more, and I'll probably do a little review on it. That'll last a lifetime. I didn't realise how big it was when I ordered it online. I thought, right, like, it's about six quid. Whereas this is like... Well, actually, this was not... Sorry, that wasn't half the price. This is more like sort of nine, but it's all, it's still cheaper. But, um... Yeah. I think a lot of people really get caught up on washing out their, like, really nice detailed brushes and that, when, um... Yeah, I, I really think using this stuff on your dry brushes is actually quite important too. Anyway, that's me babbling. Well, let's get dry brushing this guy. Um, Stronghold TV says, hey, like in the Stonehorn. Thank you. Um, I'll show him up to the camera a bit clearer. Um, you may have seen him on our social media um, platforms. Yeah, I'm really happy with how he came out. Not bad for for a few days work certainly um, I'm really happy with him good fun to paint and um, no doubt I'll end up with another one in my army uh, I need to be whacked in a bit more Um, do custodians have an al alternate paint scheme, or is it just a red and gold? Uh, Mad Cow says it's whatever you like, says GW. Yeah, they don't have to be gold. In the Forge World book, is it book 6, book 7? I've got it down there. There's an alter alternate scheme which is like black. They're like all black with like gold trim, which looks really cool. Yeah, if you want an if you want an official scheme, um, do black, do the black custodies, and that's the only other scheme that I've seen officially. But yeah, they don't have to be gold, do they? Wow, I just looked at the time, I didn't realise it was <laughs> that far gone in the in the show. Might have been a bit too ambitious when I said I'll get them fully painted. But 
We're getting there. We'll certainly get the metallics done. Um, any plans to upgrade your camera? 480 is all we get now, it seems. Um, it's not It's not due to the camera. The camera can do much better. It's just um, that's why I've got it set on the software. Um, I could try doing it higher. I just don't know what it will do to the internet connection. I don't know if I can change it midstream. No, I can't change it midstream, but I can go up to um, 1080p. Um, I'll have to try it in the future, but that's literally just what what's being output. That's just what's being output by the software and not by the camera. The camera can can do 1080 no problem. It's a really good camera actually. This is where it cuts out abruptly. Yeah, unfortunately I can't do it midstream so. <laughs> I'll try a future one with it. I have no idea how how that will fare, but really we want to push it to the, to its limits, don't we? Peter Nicholas says Yeah, Stone Horn. Yeah, you're slightly far behind again. Not much though. Of course, this only has to buffer, doesn't it, for a few seconds, and if it does that every now and then, it puts you behind by a minute. I think as far as the dry brushing goes on that colour, I think we're good. Well, I think probably the best thing to do is do the silver, and then we can do like a final dry brushing with um, Stormhost Silver or something. Maybe an idea. I've just discovered the Bushido range now, and damn, there are some nice models. Yeah, I've seen them, they're quite nice. Um, not something I'm really particularly into myself, but yeah, the models are lovely. So, breaking in a new brush soap. So. I'll tell you what, we'll use both for soaps. We'll use the big one as well. The only thing I don't really like about this is like an olive smell and... I don't really like, where's this? That is a KFC wet wipe smell. If you know the smell of a KFC wet wipe, that's what that is. <laughs> I'd like a macro camera to help me paint. Now I pull the monitor really close, but I'd like to see my unused old monitor hook up to a macro camera and look at the screen to paint small details. That's quite a good idea. I don't really have the sort of hand-eye coordination for that, but that takes a bit of practice. Like people use like magnifying sort of glasses and that. Oh, it takes a bit of practice to get used to, but that's a good idea. Yeah. I agree with you because it doesn't sound easy, but I suppose you get used to it. That Wargamer says he's not had a KFC in years. <sighs> I don't have it as much as I used to because um, my other half doesn't really like it. Um, we're more of a McDonald's couple now. I actually went for a stage of not having McDonald's for about five years. And um, now we probably have it about once a month. Yeah, I don't have KFC as much. But KFC is quite good after a night out because they stay open longer. At least around here they do. And there's one within walking distance. I use a large magnifier now, but it just doesn't get close enough. I'd like a ten times zoom instead of a two to three. Yeah, that's a really that is a twenty first century solution to an age old problem, isn't it? That's quite cool. I never thought about that. So yeah, I got most of the paint out of this. There's still paint in there. It's always going to be hard to get the completely dried out stuff out, but it's good to do with your dry brushes. 
if he ever went from red to red to white um, when it comes to dry brushing and you don't wash your brush out fully then you're going to be dry brushing pink and you really want some nice flexible bristles on them which makes the dry brushing easier the only thing is now I've washed it I can't use this brush tonight because it's just too wet to do dry brushing properly but I've got some other ones I can use just wipe my hands on this So back to the fresh mill. Uh, I've used jewelry grade magnifiers and the zoom is perfect, but your field of view is so damn small and you still have to get closer to the model, causing a bad back pose which hurts. Yeah, I mean it's bad enough as it is, isn't it? Um my back really doesn't like me from all the from all the lean forward I do. How have they done the blade? Anything fancy or just metal? Just metal. Yeah, we'll go just metal. I can't be bothered. I sometimes use a camera image to allow you closer views to see any areas need more work, but never to paint by. Yeah, I've done exactly the same. Yeah, never thought about doing it to paint by. That isn't a bad idea. Yeah, the camera always picks up stuff the eye misses. That is for sure. Old Mackie D, I had one recently and had an incredibly disappointing quarter pounder. Yeah, so I stick to my Big Macs. I mean, the thing is about these fast food places is that obviously the food isn't amazing. But what makes them popular is that it hasn't changed. Like, if, if I was to buy a Big Mac, I know exactly what I'm going to get. I know how it's going to taste, I know how big it's going to be. Whereas you can go to a fancy restaurant and the food's always going to be different to it, to a different restaurant, etc. And I think a lot of the popularity with fast food is it's just the same stuff and you know what you're getting. But yeah, um... I quite like the taste of a Big Mac, but you'd never say it was like the most fantastic food you'd ever eat. Certainly not the healthiest. <laughs> if these stream, if these live shows stop in like ten years, then just assume that I've had a heart attack. <laughs> I think I might take a break from fast food, yeah. Don't blame you. I mean, we went for a stage of eating really healthy, we are doing really well. But, that's sort of gone out the window. There is a reason for that. To some degree as well. But I won't go into it just yet. But don't worry, it's nothing bad. Anyone who knows me personally will personally could probably guess why but just remember that, that I would be grateful for tips to make rust effect for my plague marines guns etc um some of the some of the videos I'm sure like on the apostles of contagion video I did a little bit of like rust and grime and stuff to to the weapons and the metallics I literally just use the rise of rust and typhus corrosion and that. But I could do a video where I sort of do a more sort of advanced sort of rust effect because it's easy just to dry rust on orange, isn't it? But usually I'm a chicken legend man and decided to change it up. 
I just got something against getting like stuff like that at McDonald's because I just think KFC would do it better, but I'm sure they're nice though. It just depends what you're into, doesn't it? I just went with a Big Mac meal and a McFlurry this evening. Usually I get six nuggets as well, but I just didn't fancy them. I'm kind of glad I did because I'm really bloated after that. Which is strange because it's smaller than what I normally have. Well, I'm not so bloated now, but I was at the start for sure. Some painting videos zoom in real close and you see everything in perfect detail. I'd love to see it that close. You just have to get used to looking at the screen instead of a mini. Yeah, and that will take some practice, but if you get that right, yeah, that'd be really cool, wouldn't it? Peter Nicholas says, like, when you're at the dentist. Okay. I might pick up some Bushido minis to practice cloven. Any tips for it? Um... I did a I did some tutorial I did a tutorial on like doing robes if you want to do that sort of colour. Um there's a painting tutorial on our channel for that. I I think with clothes I quite like to start with like the darkest colour and then build up layers, go into your lighter colours. Um you can wet blend as well. Um I've got a video on the channel for wet blending. That works really well on clothes. Um Yeah, it could be worth. Could be worth doing some more sort of tutorials on sort of clothing and stuff. I haven't really painted anything like that for a while. It's all been power armor. But I've not done some of the um, ogres. Um, you can't really see on him, but I've just gone really simple on his trousers. They're literally just a dark color with highlights. I just try to keep it simple because I want to get them painted quick. Oh, excuse me. For rust I use this paint that actually rusts as it dries. Scale model builders use it for dioramas. Can't remember the name, but it's awesome and it creates all the colours by itself. That sounds amazing. P and it says maybe I can find more on YouTube. I swear you get you're like a couple of minutes behind, aren't you? So I kind of, I'm losing track of what you're talking about. Um Where else do I want to do metallics? Have I done that? A little bit more, just in that awkward bit there. I'll worry about the guns and stuff later on. I'm not too worried about them at the moment. I got like all this like in between his legs and stuff. Need to give wet blending a shot at some point. Is it just cloven? Oh, it is just cloven. Is something I just can't get right. I want to do a video on like painting like leather and sort of and some sort of texture to the flat surfaces doing that. That's something what is on my to do list. It's just having them right miniatures to do all, all this stuff on. Now I'm definitely obviously check out different YouTube channels and stuff. And there's so much about these days and then just practice really. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and pretend I'm some sort of painting guru because I'm not really. I like to do tutorials to show off how sort of art, how I paint stuff, I'm not really sort of showing like, you know, to achieve this effect, effect you must do this. It's just like, if I want to achieve this effect, then this is how I do it. And you know, if you'd like how it looks, then feel free to sort of mimic it. That's sort of how sort of my tutorials are. And I know from titles and stuff, they might come across like like um, the opposite but that's just that's just to get views basically but then there's people at all different levels all different types of they like different types of styles so it's nice just to it's nice just to have that sort of variety on YouTube to, ch to sort of watch I do prefer doing like the sort of quick tip style of videos because obviously they're a lot easier to film but they don't seem to get the views like a whole miniature painting a whole miniature does so I'd like to do some more sort of start to finish videos on miniatures they seem quite popular but they do take a long time to film
Double game, so I certainly will be fine with a tutorial like that. Yeah, that's definitely on the to do list. Um, I don't think of another sort of Blam Jitsu one to do as well, but that's sort of the power arm of it. Yeah, check out the Blam Jitsu videos as well, actually, because um, I did one for like brown, for brown cloth, and I might have did another colour of cloth as well, but I can't remember. Um, yeah, just look through the hobby section on a, of our playlists. There's a few on there, and also YouTube. YouTube's got so many videos to look to watch. But I'm always looking for suggestions for what to do for painting tutorials. To watch that better. So let's get some null oil up on this silver. I uh, managed to spill my Agrax Earthshade the other day. Luckily there's not a lot in it. Now it's even less. Um, I didn't post a photo up on 40k for grown ups. <laughs> but that is one downside to these big, big pots. Um, they tip over easily. So just put in the washing the vents you can see there on the tubes. I never really like washing these sort of larger, flatter areas. They always look a bit patchy, but hopefully a dry brush on top of that will help sort that out. Yeah, Pete, Peter Nicholas is um, definitely right about the cloven benefits. And um, benefits from many layers and wet blending. Yeah, I definitely like to build up the layers when it comes to cloven. I mean, for me, I find it a bit of a stylized way when I'm like doing these cloaks. Um, obviously, if you wet blended that and have like smoother transitions, it'd be a lot more realistic. But I quite like having just sort of ha having the layers like this. It's not as realistic, but I quite like the look of it. So it all depends what your sort of style is. But yeah, if you wet blended like something like this, it'd look even nicer. That's not the only thing I have on hand to show off with clothing, I think. Yeah, it's like literally nothing. I need to do some free guild, that's what I need to do. And I'd like to, uh, eventually. So, I think that's all them areas. Yep. So I just want this wash to dry, then I'll just do a lighter dry brush of a silver. That look quite nice. There's still loads of little bits and pieces what need doing on him. I think now maybe we'll just paint some black on these guns. I put it back. It's right here. I've got about half an hour left. It's gone quick this evening. For me at least. I don't know about you guys, but it's gone quick. Um, I've thinned that down way too much. I'm 
I'm trying to sort out accounts as free guild army of mercenary models rather than the much uniform empire stuff. I quite like the sound of that. That probably fits the fluff better, actually. That would be quite cool. You could use, like, um, maybe like the Chaos Marauders or something. Even though they are a bit oddly sized. But you could literally use anything on like mercenaries, couldn't you? You could mix and match all sorts. That actually looked really sweet. I really like these sort of mixed order forces that you see people do. And I think GW are gonna bring out some box sets. I like some of the mixed order stuff. Which I'm actually really looking forward to. But I quite like I quite like that as a force. Then you know a bit of Stormcast drop in during the game for like narrative. So I've just noticed there's like a little bit of his arm in there that I haven't painted gold. Urgh. I don't know how I've missed that. Yeah, mix and match is a plan, that's cool. Vo Voices says I need to see pictures, I'm tr currently trying to expand my more, more time pirate warband into an order army. Cool. Yeah, like the Empire Militia box would be really good. It's a shame they don't do that no more. Because that's such a good set. If you can get one of them on eBay, probably not cheap now, but that would work really well for mercenaries. There's a really horrible bit under here where I haven't got the primer on. The paint's not sticking too well. To put a brush on one on that bit. Yeah, Modern was a fun game. I like that. Now I'll be back. I think so. Maybe not as more time, but maybe. Maybe as an Age of Sigma style game. Although they could bring it back as more time. There's no reason why not. Find product we use, Model Mates Rust Effect. Cool, I'm gonna have to check that out. That Wargamer says, still in the planning stages. That and a serious paint and block is stopping me. But I want to make sure I get the models right before I buy. Yeah, not a bad idea here, is it? Save yourself some money. I've actually decided I'm gonna use my green, my dark green, Stegadon style scale green. I think I'll use that. Yeah, I'm going to use that on the handle grips. So we'll get a, we'll get a zero on that. So I'm using the Games and Gears brushes from the Kickstarter. They're the ones where, um, like little travel ones. Mm -hmm. So they'll, they come like that and then you can pop them out and do that. They're really cool. They're not bad brushes actually. They're not the best, but they're certainly not the worst. Um, I prefer them over GW ones.
have a band of dwarf pirates. Arr. <laughs> nice, I love Mordheim. I have three different pirate warbands. Normal, um, Capian, and Gypsies. Now I'm making some Dark Elf Griff Charger Riders. Cool. They must look tiny on them. Look for tutorials on YouTube on the model mates. Rust effect has different colours depending on how much you apply. Thin layers are more orange and thicker becomes darker. That is really cool. I'll have to definitely check that out. That is really cool. So I'm being unsociable again. Oh, and I can't type. There we go. This tutorial has gone even quicker when you missed the first 20 minutes. <laughs> so you are behind, Peter Nicholas. <laughs> How far am I behind now? I'll have to time it. Um, don't want to say that. A good five ten minutes. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what, it's now one hour forty two. So if you say something in the chat when I said one hour forty two, I'll tell you <laughs> I'll tell you um how far behind you are. And yeah, we are strictly going to um, 10 o'clock this evening because I've actually got to go grocery shopping after this. So, yeah, got to get a few bits in before we go away because we, um, we are sort of self-catering where we are. We're only going away on a little, little cottage for a weekend. Um, it was actually a bank holiday weekend. It's actually a bank holiday weekend. Um, in the UK, so if if you're um, in Europe and you want to order something from a UK company, they probably won't dispatch it um, till next week. Pinter says, "Okay, not bad for me. It's usually three hours." <laughs> um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be shipping our outstanding orders tomorrow or not because we're leaving. It's not just for lunchtime, so. If I can find a spare hour or two in the morning, which I doubt I will, then I'll ship them, but... So that's a bit of a bugger, because I want to get them out, but... With the bank holiday as well, probably going to be Tuesday before we ship barracks down on orders, and there's going to be a lot. That's the bad thing about doing this business. Holidays are nice, but you come back to all that work, so you work harder. Once you're back. But never mind. So I'm just going to touch up with bits of gold that I missed. Like I've missed this whole bit here somehow. Didn't have my glasses off when I was doing doing the gold. That's all. That's the reason. Uh, 
I see better about him close up. Had to sort of get the brush in. Harry says, Hi guys. Hello, you are here for the final final fifteen minutes. So I didn't do the drawing on the arms and silver. I think maybe I will. Oh, GW Tanger application name for Rules Rider. That sucks. I should imagine it's a very hard company to get into. To, you need to write it down in your calendar, Harry. Eight o'clock on a Thursday. That's UK time, mind you. Most jobs at GW are for people inside the company already, but they have to make the jobs available publicly due to UK laws. Yeah, you get that a lot in the um, public sector as well in the UK. Hoping eventually in time we'll be able to have we'll be able to have a um, couple of job vacancies. Um, I have been thinking about the idea for a while about getting someone else on board, but we'll see. That won't be until we've moved. Because right now all of Fitzbox stock is literally just in the spare room behind me, but that's moving out of there soon. It's a bit cramped to have it all in there. Vanders here as well. Everyone, everyone comes here quite late. Yeah, so. I, I guess the show starts about sort of ten o'clock at night for people in like Finland and Greece and that. You have to start as a manager and get contacts. <laughs> I've sent numerous versions of the sisters' credits to GW over the years. Heck, I've seen some of the stuff I've suggested get implemented in other characters, especially um, Space Marine Dexter for some reason. Well, you never know, do you? And they might... They might be implementing it. Stronghold TV says cheers for all the bits over the years, by the way. It is my pleasure. Hopefully you'll be providing many more over the coming years. I always said when I first started the business that if I can just make it to like 10 years and then move on, I'll be happy. But I think it's survived that long before. 
um, it becomes unfeasible or doesn't work or something. But now it's um, 11 years next month and we're still going to keep going strength to strength. I think in the old days there's always that thought that GW might find a way to shut us down but I think now they're a different animal altogether. Amanda says everything good around here? Well, more than normal since we got a hottie on our Stormcast host. <laughs> Peter says 1 hour 50, hey ho, so um, 9 minutes. Yeah, wow, okay. Um, Madco says, have they sent you cease and desist letters? Um, no, they've never done that. Um, when first started the business, um, get, speaking of GW was one of the first things that we did, so we could... Um, Um, basically, um, so we sort of knew what the ground rules were from day one. We had to like have a disclaimer on the site. We couldn't, um, obviously, couldn't have. Um, hang on, we couldn't have like, a trade account with them. Like obviously, what you do, Madcare, we couldn't have that. So we, they were quite, they were quite um, specific about what we could and couldn't have. Is it just me? I was just like lamp really bright. My face was like almost pure white. I'm sorry, I don't even notice I missed this. Um, yeah, so um, straight from day one, they sort of, they were aware of us. We were aware of them. Obviously, we were aware of them, but you know, we were aware of what we could and couldn't do. So they're all good. There's been a couple of times over the years where they've said, "Oh, you really should be doing this, this, and this." Blah blah blah. Um, there was one thing where they said, they said, "Oh, you should have, um, like." Um, safety warnings on all your packages. So basically, them saying, well, obviously you you don't sell this stuff as um. You know you don't manufacture this stuff, so you, you we couldn't have like safety safety labels on our packages because we don't have original packaging. Does that makes sense. And I sort of got back to them saying, well, we sort of sell our stuff as second hand, so that's sort of like a loophole basically. So we get around that. And they're like, oh yeah, that's fine as long as you state on your website that you. You are selling these a second hand, so um, whether that was a way of them trying to make it difficult for us or not, um, that was back. That was that was a long time ago, though. Um, obviously, they're a lot different now. Um, I've spoken to their legal team and their trade teams over the years. Pointing out certain other, spoke to them about other sites who don't always follow the rules, which they've been grateful for. Um, I'm not going to name names, but you could probably guess which which one of our competitors aren't always um, following GW rules. But at the same time, they haven't shut them down because basically you can't get in contact with them. Anyone who's used certain other bits companies will know that not all of them are easy to get in contact with. Um, but I won't go into all that. But yeah, um, I remember like really early on we used like the Warhammer and the Warhammer 40k logo on the website and they quickly told us you can't use them. So that's fair enough. But yeah, um, they're normally quite good. So, And now um, I've even had orders go to um, GWHQ. Um, I've had a couple of people on the Black Library team who have ordered from us. And I can't remember if the other person was on the design team or not. But yeah, that's pretty cool. You'd think they wouldn't need to, but... Um, the only bit I have trouble getting a hold of are capes and cloaks. Yeah, they do go really well, don't they? They sell really well. Um, did your YouTube channel help the business of Bitsbox, or does it now, as a, ch or does it now as the channel grows? I think it has a little bit. There has been a couple of people who said, "Oh, I didn't even know you had a shop." Like they found the channel first and then found us, so that's quite cool. Obviously, we link to this. Oh, excuse me. We link. We have links to the online store in the description of all our videos. That doesn't get a lot of traffic, but it gets extra traffic. So, yeah, I think it's helped. Um, I think Eighth Edition has helped more than anything. Like since Eighth Edition's dropped, our sales have really gone up. 
Um, not by a great deal, but it's noticeable enough. Like, really noticeable. Like, even on... Even our bad days aren't as bad as our bad days used to be. Um, yeah, it's been really good, and it's really helped the channel as well, so... Yeah. Are you going to do more Halo videos if they release any more Fleet Battles or Grand Command stuff? It's funny, because we get asked this all the time. Um, I've put on my Patreon, if we reach $500 a month on Patreon, we will do Halo again. But I'm not going to do it unless we reach that... Unless we reach that goal. So that's what I'm going to say on Halo. Whether they release more stuff or not, doesn't matter. Um, if we reach that goal, we'll we'll do it again. And also, if we reach that goal, we will actually try and look into hiring someone to do the odd video for us here and there. So that could be quite a good opportunity for someone. Are you getting that Age of Sigma and Noble Snail character? Um, I will do eventually. Um, I was asked this at the beginning of the show. Um, I don't think I will straight away, because I just need to try and ease off my spending a little bit when it comes to GW stuff, because it's just shit's just mounting up. It's just it's getting ridiculous now. If GW offered you a job to be an official bit seller and get a trade account discount on the condition that you always had the product in stock, would and could you do that or would it be too much work? I couldn't do it on, on my own. I think having... It would be impossible to always have like 100% stock because someone will come along... Like say I had 100 bo of each box. This is 100. Some boxes might have one. Say the Death Watch. The Death Watch box is a good example. They have all the little chapter shoulder pads. Someone might just come in and buy a hun all hundred of the Raven Guard or something, and that's gone. That's a hundred boxes. The time it would take to cut up a hundred Death Watch boxes, you're probably talking all week, <laughs> at least, maybe even two. If it was just me, that's a hundred boxes, and my hands would just be like that. Um. I don't know, there's a reason why GW don't do it themselves, and the amount of work and space that's involved is probably the reason why. They would have to hire a large team to do it. Um, even at my level, like, now, it's it's difficult. Um, I don't actually do it all on my own. Um, but where I am now, probably about half the work I do just was just me, and even that's, like, difficult to maintain at the moment. So, yeah, that would be really difficult. Um, if GW were a bit more savvy about how they did sprues and stuff, and upgrade sprues, and they just sold the sprues, I think they could do that quite well. But yeah, um, yeah, like on on the level that a site like GW would sell bits, yeah, it would just be manic, absolutely manic. And then of course, um, the bits what don't sell, think how many you would have. It would be crazy. And how you'd store them, I don't know. You'd need a massive warehouse. You'd need to get an ultrasonic scalpel to cut stuff. Yeah. Or people. I would happily pay pay someone like almost full-time wages if they just cut up stuff with a sprue for me. And that's something I probably will try and do in the future. Just try and hire someone. Literally, their job would just be to cut stuff off sprues. Wish GW would sell individual sprues, they'd make them a lot of money if they did. Yeah, especially vehicle ones. Definitely, some of the vehicle ones. Weapon sprues. Yeah, I mean, they used to, don't they? To some degree. I think that'd be easier for them to do, because they can literally just manufacture them. Whereas with bits, you have to manufacture a whole sprue just for that one bit. That could just be a complete bugger. But yeah, if they did Holt sprues, that'd be really good for them. That'd be good for me as well, because like certain sprues I could buy in. And, you know, that'd be really good. Like, I'd probably then stock vehicle stuff, because I wouldn't have stock with chassis. I could stock, stock just for guns and stuff. I think that'd be really cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I had the old catalogue where they had all the metal bits in and stuff. That was really cool. Um, It might have been a lot of work for them, and they just gave up. I'm willing to pay someone to scrape mould lines for me I'll spend more time doing that than anything else. <laughs> yeah. I remember someone asking us once, like... I never asked or they complained that um, we didn't have the mould lines cut off, like, scraped off, like, bits we sold. I think we probably had someone complain and someone actually ask if we did. Like, could you imagine? That'd <laughs> be hell. I used to have a friend who used to do that. <laughs> 
I think they don't do sprues because they like to sell their boxes with basically two units on different sprues, but only one set of legs. Oh yes. But then people like me make good money from selling legs, so that's good. Right, we have reached the two hour mark, so I really have to call it there. As I said, I've got to go grocery shopping 10 o'clock at night. It's the best time to go, but I'm knackered. But we need a few bits before we go away in the morning, so yeah, I'm going to call it right there. It's been a really good show, and we will be back next week. Um, advance warning that the week after there won't be a show, but um, next week, um, same time. So yeah. Um, Harry says, why don't you make a little discount on bits left with the sprue they attached on? That would save you some time and work. Will not bother me, for sure, as a buyer, because I have to, cause I have, have to have to clean it either way. Yeah, um, sometimes I do anyway, but yeah, I'll have to find a quick way of doing it. Anyway, I shall see you all later. Um, thank you, voices. I will have a nice time away, and I'm sure I'll tell you all about it next week. Um, thanks for watching. You've been all been brilliant, as always. I'll see you next week.